what's up guys we're going to talk about more on the critical point actually I want to talk about the difference between a vapor and a gas even though of course they are kinetic energies and all that is similar of that they are not liquids or solids they move a lot they have high content of energy well one thing I want to tell you is that if we wanted to separate let's say this temperature, the critical temperature, all gases that are above this critical temperature, I will, I will call them gases. Why? Because then they will not condense, at least, okay? But all those gases that are before that critical temperature, I will call them vapor. Why vapor? Because they are easy to condense, okay? So imagine, let's say, water vapor and air. You know, typically air, we call it a gas because it's pretty difficult to condense air, even though you can do it, and actually we do it industrially, to nitri liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen. But you know, water vapor is way easier to condense. Actually, if you are in your home, you will see that if you have water vapor here and you have, I don't know, maybe a top, you will have droplets because they are condensing very easily. So hopefully you get the idea on vapor and gaseous phase. It's only the, the only difference is the critical point. If the temperature is before that critical point, then it's a vapor. If it's after, then it's a gas. And even though the gas, technically speaking, is the state of matter, we will refer to this spatial area before that critical temperature as vapor. And let me tell you, all gas, all gases, all vapors are gases, but not all gases are vapor. Okay. Due to the possibility of condensing or easily condensing, okay? So, vapor is very easily to condense when pressurized. A gas will not condense that easily when you pressurize it. For example, actually, a supercritical fluid will go, you will form it. Look, if we are here, we stay constant temperature, but we increase temperature, we will achieve liquid phase. And if we are in a gas, if we get constant temperature, we will achieve a supercritical fluid. So hopefully you get the insight that if we increase pressure, we are not going to condense the gas. But if we increase the pressure of the vapor, we will form a condensate or a liquid phase. So essentially, pressurized gas forms a supercritical fluid, pressurized vapor forms a liquid. Now, once again, this is an example. Uh, water has a critical temperature of 374 Celsius, uh, which is the highest temperature at which liquid water can exist. Also, that's a good point. If I give you that critical point, you will see that if we had 375 Celsius, if I increase the pressure of that, I will form a supercritical fluid and not a liquid. Okay, so that's essentially everything on vapor versus gas is easy to get but it's difficult I think to really really understand why you when you pressurize a vapor here you get a liquid and why when you pressurize a gas you get a supercritical fluid What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. So 
Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.